Hello, welcome everybody. Good afternoon. It's Miss Gabby again. Uh, I'm going to help you with value-added text, of which is VET, the topic that is very easy. But before we start, I just want us to have this code in mind. There is no security in life. There is only opportunity. So use the opportunities that comes your way in a good way. Use them in a fruitful way because uh, opportunity might come once. So remember there is no security in life. You don't know what is going to happen after you have written metric or after uh, tomorrow. So use the opportunity for today to learn VET and make use of it for next week, Tuesday. So let's get going. Explanation of VED. What is VED? VED is value added text. And you can explain it in this way. Is a text charged on supply of goods and services by a vendor. I hope you know what is a vendor because this topic comes from grade 10. It is therefore an indirect, is an indirect form of tax on consumption. That means on things that are consumable, on things that are sold. It is charged at a standard rate of 14%. You might come a question of, of explain, of say, or you might come, come around a question that says you must explain what is VET, of which you'll say VET is value added tax. If they, you'll check the marks. Sometimes they want a deeper explanation. That is why you'll come deeper this way to attain your marks. Every time before answering the question, you must make sure that you check the marks as to see how far can you go. Then we have kinds of texts where we have zero rated and where we have VET exempt. What is zero rated? We have some goods that are charged at zero rated, charged at zero on certain basis. For example, those goods can be example of foodstuff. It's aimed to prevent hardships on intelligent people. Examples, it's a brown bread, a milk, vegetables, fruit, eggs, or canned peel chart. Once you start buying a white bread, it's not a zero-rated item because it is luxurious. You can live without white bread. It's not a basic thing. Then we come to ex that exempt. Exempted by act of uh, parliament from being charged. That example is interest, child welfare, child, child care services, educational services, and so on. Like the schools you are attending. You don't pay VET there. That is why we say it's a school fees is a VET exempt item. So let's come to the difference. We have two, vet, we have two types of VET of which we can say... Uh, Two ways of calculating a VET. We have VET inclusive and VET exclusive. What is the difference between VET inclusive and VET exclusive? VET inclusive, we mean that the VET is in. It's in the items. That is why when you calculate it, you say VET has been included in the price that you are buying. And the value, the, to calculate VET, you must multiply by 14 divided by 114. If you check there, it's 14 divided by 114. The 100 as the denominator, you have added the 14. That is inclusive. Then we come into exclusive. That has not been added to the price and to calculate that, you must multiply by 14 over 100. Since from the first slide, we agreed that that is 14 over 100. So we must calculate it straightforward when they said it is excluded because we want to exclude it. Remember, the goods must be including VET every time when you sell them. So you'll say VET X, remember with X it's just 100, the denominator. But with IN, you include the 14, the denominator. But the top, uh, the top percentage remain as it is. It's, it's always 14. Divide. When you talk about X, it means it's just 100. When you talk about IN, of which is inclusive, we talk about 114. Okay. VET input and VET output. In the VET input account, it reflects uh, all the VET on items purchases. Every time when you buy, we have VET input. Remember, you take yourself as the business every time you do the financial statements. So all the VET on items purchases on the debit side and all the entries that lead to the reduction of the amount on the credit side. So remember, 
every time you buy or every time you purchase a stock, when it, the stock comes into the business, it is that input because you have bought the goods, you have purchases. And then this account will have a balance which will be closed off as a debit balance on the VAT control account. Then coming to VAT output, this reflects all the VAT on items sold on the grade or on the grade side and all entries that lead to the reduction of that amount on the debit side. And this account will have a balance which will be closed off to the credit side of the VAT control account. How do we differentiate between the, the in September paper? We had a question where we had to differentiate or explain VAT input and VAT output. I normally say to people to advise them in a correct manner. I usually say when you buy stock, just think that on top of that stock, uh, it is wrapped, normally it is put it in the boxes or it's wrapped with a plastic. Just think that that box that the stock is inside is VAT. Every time you take that stock from the supplier into your business, that is where you say you're having that input. Every time you take the, the goods, you put them in a plastic bag for the customer, the customer goes away with that goods. It's out. It means it is moving along with stock. So many people used to understand it in that way. I normally say that goes together with the stock or with the inventory. Every time me as the business, when I buy something, those boxes that the goods are inside, I call them that input and then every time when i take them out i'm taking the goods out remember i'm giving them to the customers ne? when i take them out i normally say when selling those goods i normally say it's a vet output i think now it makes sense and then remember we said under vet input where uh, the balance that is closing off there it will be the on the debit side of the vet control we are going to talk what is or we're going to talk about a vet control what is a vet control but it's basically controlling the two accounts where you put, you check your VAT input against your VAT outputs. So remember on the output, it will be on the credit side. So VAT input versus VAT output. VAT input is leveraged, charged again on sales and other income. It's collected on behalf of SARS and it must be paid over to SARS and therefore it represents what? A liability. It is a liability. What is a liability? I normally say a liability is everything that the business must pay, the obligations of the business. But with that input, that input is the tax levied on items, goods, and services that are purchased by the business. It can be claimed back from SARS and therefore represent what? An asset. Because it's going to come as a form of money and that money goes to your bank and your bank is obviously an asset. So we agree that VAT output, it's on the sales, it goes out of the stock, and remember, you must pay it on behalf of SARS. You claim it, you keep it into your business, but it, it's not yours. It must go to the owner of which is the SARS. And that owner, when we pay that owner, we say it is a liability. But with VAT input, leave it on the goods that are purchases. That one you can claim back from SARS. You can say, no, I've bought this much, so here's your receipts, can I get my... VAT pay. VAT output minus VAT input equals to amount owed to or by SARS. It will differ depending on the amount. For example, if VAT output exceeds 90 rand, let's say it's 90 rand, VAT input is 80 rand, the amount is payable to SARS. That means that difference, the 10 rand, will be payable to SARS. So if the input exceeds, uh, then it's 85 rand, then VAT output is 65 rand, then the amount receivable from SARS, it is going to be 20 rand, and that amount must come to your business. That is the amount that you must claim. Remember that amount you must claim from SARS. And then, a uh, VAT control account. VAT control account is basically controlling of VAT input and VAT output. This account reflects the following. We have VAT input on the debit side. And we have VAT output on the credit side. That means everything that deals with inputs must be debited. Everything that deals with output must be credited. So the balance may be debited if VAT input is greater than VAT output. Or the balance may be credited if VAT input is less than 
the VAT output. It, it will take you back there where I said the 10 rand is payable to SARS, the difference, and then the 20 rand is receivable from SARS. Okay, here is our VAT control account. What you see on the other side, it's debited. This is what must fall under the debit, the debit side. And what you see on the other side is the credit side. This is what must fall under the credit side. Under your VAT control account, remember you're controlling your VAT now. We talked about inputs and uh, outputs. When you go a little, when you go a back a little bit, when you go back, you'll see that VAT output. No, I didn't want this screen. You'll see that output is levied and charged on sales and it's a liability. I didn't want this screen. I, uh, okay, I was here. The accounts reflect input. That means everything that is on the debit side. You see the banks, whatever, is inputs. And then this one on the credit side, it's output. So let's take, for example, a bank, of which is on the debit side. It means you have bought, you have purchased. That is why I put the word purchased in the bracket. As the business, you can purchase the stock to sell, or you can purchase the stock to use in your business. So everything that you have purchased, you're going to debit there as bank. And then you calculate VAT. And then again, you have bag or item bought. For example, I'm a, a, a general, I'm a general dealer, but as a general dealer, I'm still going to have, I'm still going to need to buy a vehicle or a van to transport my goods. That means it will be the second bank item board where I wrote item board. You'll write your delivery van, and then that has control. That means. You sold the goods to the debtors, now they have returned them because they are not in good condition. So all your returns must be debited there. And then you come to sundry accounts, which can include the bad debts. Remember the bad debts are those people that you gave them goods, but they can't pay. So you must write them as bad debts. So obviously it's going to be debited there. And then the discount allowed, here's a customer you have given a customer discount due to certain reasons. There are so many reasons that can I make you to give a discount to a customer. So you are also going to debit that under the VAT control. Then coming to the credit side. The credit side of VAT control, you will be having bank stroke sales. It means the sales that you have done to the customers must be credited. So hence why you are going to credit them day or you write debt as control it again de depend on what uh, how did you sold stock to them was it on cash that is your bank you see was it on credit it will just depend and then again we have sentry accounts there of which is the drawings remember the owner can take the goods for his or her personal use that is when we talk about drawings so if this person has taken the goods for his personal use it is drawings that is where you are going to credit him because it is a VAT output. Then I think uh, from now we need to get going. We must work. You must see how or what do we mean by this. But what is important for us now is for us to remember what is it that should be debited and what is it that should be credited. Before we can start working, I just want to make you aware that some learners will just have a tendency of calculating amounts and leave them there. It doesn't work like that because sometimes you might have got a, you might have got an amount that must be a, a negative amount. You just write it as a positive as it is. You will get it wrong because we assume that you are not. You don't know what is happening. You don't know what is vet control. You don't know which one is positive and which one is negative. So my advice for you, in case in this paper that is coming, we get a topic on VAT. When they want you to do the VAT control, go back to the T account and you will have your skeleton as it is. On the debit side, you will be having your bank, you will be having whatever that you bought, debt has control, sundry accounts, and then on the credit side, you will be having bank of the sales, and then you will be having sundry accounts. So my good advice is for you is to go back to leisure account. This thing of just calculating, 
amount, 14 over 114, you leave it as it is. Sometimes it's a positive, it's a negative number. So if you have written it as it is, we think or we assume it's a positive number. So you get it wrong. So it's better for you to go back to your ledger account. So I want us to get into the paper now and do the paper practically. I have with me here a question 4 of value added tax where it is having 40 marks for 25 minutes. It is an easy topic. That is why they give it a very short period, 25 minutes to finish it. And you can collect all that 40. So just imagine having that total of 40 out of 300. It's really a, a, a lot of marks. It makes a difference. Okay. Then let's check here. We are talking about bond stores owned by James Bond is registered for VET under category B. The invoice basis on one month period. The business also deals with other VET vendors. You have been provided with the information from the journal of, for January 2010. You are required to do the following. What is meant by value added tax? And what rate is VET calculated in South Africa? First of all, you must explain what is meant by value added tax. What did we say value added tax is? We said now we come into to answer number one of which what is value added tax we said that tax uh, it's a tax that is charged on sales of goods and services you can have your two marks by that the question says to you uh, what is meant by value added tax and what rate is it calculated in South Africa? So the answer is is a tax on sell, uh, a tax that is done on sales of goods and services. It will be one mark and then it says at which rate we agreed is 14 percent. So you will see you will be having your total two marks on that item so the theory part of it it is very important so you can even go back and let's get back to our slide and then see here we agreed that you can explain it in this way uh, a tax charge on supply of goods and services by the vendor is the same way or you can say a tax on sales of goods and services is still the same way where at what rate is it charged 14 percent so can you see that this, the first slide actually tried to address the first question. Our first question which says what is meant by value added tax. So it is very important for you to know the meaning of it before you can deal with it. Alright, I want us to move to the second question of which it takes five marks. In the current rate, uh, is the current rate of VAT being charged on all goods and services? explain is it so is it everything that is it is everything charged vet obviously no obviously no why do we say no remember we said vet is charged on zero rated items at zero percent and that is not charged on vet exempt so the answer is no by that no you have your one mark and then another explain because they said you should do what explain you say that it's charged it's charged on zero rated items items at at zero percent the answer is no, VET is charged on zero rated items at zero percent. That is the first resin. The second resin, which will obviously take two marks. Then you go to the next resin. We say that is not charged 
on that on that exempt goods exempt goods or items that is where we are going to have our two marks another two marks is going to come here here is the first two marks and there is the second two marks here is the first two marks here is the second two marks and here is the one mark so it means you will be having total five marks in that case so you would have answered the two questions. The first question of which is uh, two marks, you manage to have it, and this one you also manage to have it. Let's move to the second question. Calculate the following. The VAT output amount from CRJ. Then you check your additional information. Here is your additional information. We having uh, CRJ under CRJ, we have total sales column is this much. Total current income, we have that much. Remember what did I say? I said uh, that output is calculated on what? On sales and income. I just want to verify that with you. I'm going back to the slide again. Uh, we said that VAT is charged. There we are. We said VAT is charged on items sold. It's charged on item sold. VAT on items sold and on credit sales and all entries that led to reduction of that amount. And it will be credited. We said it's, it is sales, that output is levied on sales and other income. Remember those two things. Output is on sales and other income. So it will be easy for you when you come to the question and you see, you check. Now I'm checking for my VAT output. What is it that I should check? It means you must check what? Your sales and your income. So let's calculate it and see what is it that we get. Uh, how much is our sales? It's 45,000. Then we come to our answer sheet. Number three, we're having 45,000. Multiply. There we say it's written cash receipt general. Do we multiply with 14 over 100 of 114 of 14 over 114? Well, which one should we use? No, you just remember that it's a cash receipt general. In your cash receipt general, you don't include VAT. Therefore, you must calculate VAT. You say multiply by 14 over 100. Let's see how much do we have here. How much do we have there? 45,000. Multiply by 14 divided by 100. Then you will be having 6,300. 6,300. Then you come to the next item, of which is what? Your incomes. Your incomes is how much? 12,100. Then you go 12,100 multiply by 14 over 100, which gives you how much? 12,100 multiply by 14 divided by 100. Then you'll be having your 1,000 694. Then we check. What is it that is left? That has control column. Remember, we are looking for VAT what? VAT output. Which says it's for sales and income. That has control. We can include it there. Sundry accounts. It's not there. It's nil. Total VAT output column. You must calculate it. Therefore, let's check how much is the total VAT output column. It's the addition of the two. We say 6,300 plus 1,694 will be having 7,994. This is uh, your four marks. It's your four marks. It's this four marks, which says the VAT output amount from CRJ is how much? Four marks. 
your format will go like this. You will have your 1, your 2, your 3, and your 4. So you'll be having a total of 4 marks. So you'd have completed that question. Then let's move to the next item. Remember, we are calculating VAT. They said we must calculate VAT what? Output. It's our VAT output. VAT output, which is touched mainly on two aspects of say from sales and incomes. I think now we are fine and very clear. VAT output charged on sales and income. All right. Then I want us to move to the number four, question four. Question, no, still question four, the second question. The VAT input amount from CPJ. That means you are talking about the inputs. We must check what? Our CPJ. Our CPJ is here. We have total on trading stock. There we have creditors control column. There we have total of wages column. There we have. So which one should we use from the cash payment general? Should we calculate that on all of them? On trading stock, creditors control, and wages. Should we calculate uh, our VAT on all of them? No. Let's check. Then we move to question four. No, it's still question three. Let's say it's A. This one is uh, 3B. 3B goes like this. We are having our our trading stock there is how much? 32,500. Then you go 32,000 500 multiply by 14 over 100. How much do you have? 32,500 multiply by 14 divide by 100. Then you will be having 4,500. Okay? Let's check. What else do we have? Creditors control. Do we have to claim uh, do we have to calculate VAT on that? No. It will be calculated in the account for in the account for creditors general. There it is. You see, it will be calculated there. It won't be calculated from the CPJ. Wages. When we pay wages, do we have to calculate VAT? No. Wages cannot be, cal cannot be charged VAT because it's not goods. It's not consumable things. It's not goods. So we can't charge VAT on wages. Instead, we can charge tax, another tax, tax on what? On the salaries that we have, and that we call what? Payee. We don't call it VAT. So, in this case, it simply says, you have your three marks there. You manage to calculate your input, VAT input, VAT input. You manage to calculate your VAT input, of which it, it gives you three marks. It's one, and then it's two, is three. You have your three marks. Therefore, your VAT input was calculated on the stock. Stock board. Stock board. Your VAT input. And here it was your VAT output. Okay. Let's check on the VAT amount. Let's go to the other question. The C of this question. And then we, here we are. We're calculating the C of that question. Our C goes like the question paper. It says the vent output amount from DJ. We're moving to this side and checking. Where is our DJ? Our DJ of which is debtors general. Goods were sold on credit for this much. Vet inclusive. So if they said it's in, it means your 100 must have the in 14%. So we calculate it this way. We say, uh, how much is our DJ? We agreed that our DJ, we bought for this much, 24,795. 24, we said 24,795. Then you multiply by 14, divide, you come. We said, if it's in, you write 100 plus 14, of which is in 
That is where you say you are 14 divided by 114. The inclusive. Because of the word inclusive, we must include the 14 into 100. So it makes 114. The inclusive, you calculate it this way. Therefore, let's go. We have in 24,795 multiply by 14 divide by 114 we are just calculating what our vet therefore our vet equals to 3045 and then we move again they said to us a uh, vet output amount from dj they specifically told you that from dj so let's see if you see there is three marks let's see how do we allocate our three marks here is our three marks. It's your one mark. It's your one mark for 14 over 114 and your one mark there. So you'll be having your three marks. You will be having your three marks for that particular item. So I want us, uh, they said to us we should prepare the VAT output. We should prepare the VAT output and VAT input accounts close of the account so what i will say to you i will say that we should prepare the vet control the vet control account we are going to prepare output and input of which we try to do our vet control account our vet control account remember i said this is how you do it it will be your vet control vet control it should, it should be like that. And then what is it that should be debited? And what is it that should be credited? I said, we are going to have, let's go back a little bit to our slides. Our slide says, our VAT control account will look like this. It will look like this. You will have bank, of which is the purchases. You will have bank, whatever that you bought, whatever that you bought. You will have debtors control, of which is the returns. You will have sundry accounts, which involves your bad debts, maybe your discount allowed. It will just depend. On the credit side, we'll be having our bank. We'll be having our sundry accounts, of which is it might be drawings, and so forth. So here we go. Now that we have a skeleton or a picture of what is it that we should do, you just come to our template. Our template is here where we are having a vet control, bank, whatever that we bought. Uh, again, we are having uh, the purchases that were made. And then we come. Debt has control. How much is our debt has control? How much is our debt has control? Or our bank? Or our drawings? Anyone that is very close. Then let's come here to the question paper. We are seeing that uh, here is another additional information. The owner, the owner took goods at cost of 250 for personal use. The vet on that goods was how much? 35 rand. This 35 rand, it means it's the owner who has taken it. It means it's what? Your drawings. There you come. You come this side, you have your drawings. And then you come to the other aspects where they said, uh, another adjustment. It says a data P penny has disappeared. The debt of 100 rand is to be written off as irrecoverable. All items sold to this person were subjected to debt of 14 rand. So it means it is a bad debt. Where do you put penny? You put penny here under the bad debt. Then you go back and you check your account. Your money for the bank it means you are having your receipts and your payments. So you must check the difference between your payments and your receipts to check the amount of money 
that must be into the business. We agreed that our amount for uh, for bank it will be the seven thousand nine hundred and ninety four that we got together, and then. Uh, 7,944 and then you subtract the the one for vet input of which is uh, uh, 4,550 4, what is the difference there? the difference will be how much? 3,444 so due to the fact that we are having other allowances here which are not included and then the creditors general there which are not included of which you'll put them there so uh, it will go a bit far because we must check the difference between the cash payments and the cash receipts so i just want us to quickly go to where they have already calculated the the bank account for us the credit side and whatever for everything so let us quickly go on to that activity but we're still having our skeleton there the next activity, I'll take this one that everybody knows of, which is the September one that we did it. Um, most schools, all schools did revision on it. I'll come to this one. This one where almost all schools did revision on it. We said, uh, we said that uh, the information provided below was extra askis all right i'm with you the information provided below was extracted from the books of timza stores for the period july august 2012 timza stores is a sole proprietorship business registered with sars as vet vendor on income on invoice basis the business submits vet returns every second month all goods bought and sold by team stores are subjected to 14% VAT. So what is the difference between VAT output and VAT input? This one we have already answered. Our agreement, we said that uh, VAT input, this is our agreement. Okay. I said now we agreed, we had an agreement of VAT output. I said every time when you put plastic bags, the goods into the plastic bags, that should be your output. It means it is on sales. And what? And incomes. And then that input. Every time you buy. Ne? Every time the stock that comes into your business. This one is for purchases. So your three marks in this case will go as follows. Number one. They said to you. What is the difference between output and input you come you say number one output when you talk about output you're talking about the vet that is done on sales and then the vet that is done on incomes of the business now you're talking about outputs then coming to input Input is the vet that is text on item that are purchased. Item, item, items, purchases. You will be having your three mark. Your three mark will go as follows. You have your one, you have your two, you have your three there. And then we come into number two. Number two, it says... Calculate the amount of VAT payable to or by SARS on the 31 August 2012 and indicate whether the amount is payable or receivable from SARS. Interesting, hey? It means we must go back to our skeleton. Our skeleton go like this. I'm going to use the very same skeleton that we had, but I'm going to include amounts in different colors. Here is our skeleton. So I will cancel this one because we shifted that activity. Uh, coming here, the question paper. It says stock purchases by check. 
It means it is whatever that you bought. So it is what? Exclusive. X, you don't include the 14. This is how you do it. It's 114, it's, it's 1,440,000 multiplied by 14 divided by 100. How much do we have? 201,000. Because it is X, you come here on, to be on the safe side. Remember I said, uh, what we do this side, this side I said, we calculate whatever that you have purchased. And here, stock purchases. Stock purchases of how much? 1,404,000, 1, 2, 3, multiply by 14 over 100. You don't include 14 here because it is excluding fat. You have 201. 600, two, 201, 201, 600. And then we come into the second transaction, equipment purchased by check. It means you have purchased something still on the debit side. Whatever that you have bought, you have purchased. You have purchased what? Equipment. For how much? Coming back. 36,000 and... Uh, 41, 36,000 exclusive and inclusive was 41,000. So in this case, you just check what? For the difference. The difference will be 41,040 minus 36,000. The difference is 5,040. This 5,040 must be written here. 5,040. Then we go to the next transaction. It says to us, sales of goods for cash on credit. That means it's in. That means you must take it out. It is included. So when it's included, you do likewise on your calculator. You say, how much is the amount? It's 957,600 multiply by 14, divide by 114 because it is included. And then you'll be having 117,600. This 117,600, you will take it to this other side. 117,600. You'll take it onto that other side. And then moving on to the next one. The next one is uh, goods returned by customers. We are going to have to look for the difference between the two. And the difference is your vet. You say... 63,840 minus 56,000. And then the difference is how much? 7,840. This 7,840 comes here. 7,840 as your debtors control. And then going back to the account again, we must calculate the VAT for discount allowed. Discount allowed was how much? Was 3,000. 600. So because it's X, you must multiply by 14 divided by 100. Therefore, you'll be having 504. This 504 is going to come to a sundry because it's a discount allowed. I said here you put in bad debts or discount allowed. Your discount allowed in this case is 504. Then we're looking for another transaction. Another transaction, drawings of stock by the owner, you look for the difference. Drawings, remember, it must be credited in this case. Then you say the difference is 32,600 minus 37,164 equals to 4,564. Therefore, we go again, we say, sundry of which is our drawings, it's how much? 4,564. 64. And then we go to the last one. The last one here we have in bed debts of 18,810. So it's going to be 18,810 multiplied because the, of the word in, you must include the 14. 14 divided by 114 
of which is 23,100. The 23,100 must be taken here, 23,100, because it's the amount for what? For the bad debts. Therefore, you add the two together, you will be having 23,010 plus 504, of which you will be having 28,140. So, I think our skeleton is fully fleshed. What we should do now, we should just balance. And then it's your homework. I'm giving you five minutes break to do that. Just check for the balance. Just do the balance for us. And then when we come back, we finish up everything. Thank you.